So tonight we have a class, a very, very, very amazing class. The person I, I'm assuming, and I hope that the people we walked in here tonight, we're not, we're, we're not going to walk out the same. Okay? This class is very, 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 very practical. Extremely how to make our lives different. Really to make our lives better. To, you know, upgrade our lives. We all want an upgrade. We all want to upgrade our phones. We all get to upgrade our cars every three years when we lease them. We all upgrade our furniture most sometimes. We upgrade. We upgrade a lot of things over the course of our lives. Human beings need to upgrade. You know, and if you don't upgrade, then you, uh, you remodel. Um, you, you, you change things around, right? Um, it's very not common that we find people that are standing still in their lives and are happy, right? Um, remodeling and upgrading is a very, it's a very, um, it, it, shows, it shows that the person is there and the person is evolving and the person is changing and the person, it's a very healthy sign, right? To every so often make a change, every so often upgrade in whatever, in whatever way. In Israel, it's very common to find courses um, and all, all spectrum of Israelis, from very religious to not religious at all, people take courses on how to expand internally. And in very many different ways, it's like a very in thing to do there, extremely. You could be a um, top professional and uh, a college student or an older person or wherever you are in life. It's very, very acceptable and almost like the norm in the society to take courses, to take courses of self-development. And um, it's really, really important. I remember when I came here three years ago to, to New York, not to Florida, when I came to New York three years ago, I like realized that wow, like, you know, it's, it really is a rat race. I grew up here till I was 18, and then I went to Israel for many, many years. I, I was there till I was 30, and I came back when I was 30, and I realized that, wow, it really is a rat race. People are very, 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 very stressed and dealing with a lot. There's a lot, it's very, it is expensive to live here. People have a lot of expenses. People have a lot of things on their minds. And where, in Israel, my experience was a little different. People, everyone was like, kind of like, you know, in minus. So everyone is kind of like, you know, dealing with the situation as, all right, no one's rich. So people were, people had that kind of mentality of, okay, I'm not rich. So there wasn't so much of an emphasis on um, running around so, so much to the, to, the, to the degree that it is here. Okay. And with that kind of responsibility in life of having to take care of so many things like it is in America, right? And so much, there's so much responsibility and things are so expensive and you have to keep your life on a certain level. Um, also comes um, what, what, what gets sacrificed. Something has to get sacrificed, right? Something has to be, something has to get thrown in the fire, right? You can't also be perfect mom and also be perfect wife and also be a perfect um, housemaker and also be a perfect whatever it is that you have your degree in, whatever it is that you're working, whatever it is that you're doing in order to bring in money and also be really, you know, evolved on the inside and learning and developing and working out and eating healthy and being vegan and juicing. Like, all the things that we know are shoulds and we know are healthy and we know we should live our lives, but something gets thrown in the fire, because when there's just so much, right, then we, we, it's very, 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 very hard to keep up with everything. So these classes, these once-a-week classes, and I'm saying this to whoever is listening, to anyone that's listening from home or, or whoever's going to see this video, it's, it's as, if not more, important to give yourself, I try an hour a day, at least an hour a week, right, to get into a mode of self-development. Because if this... If this right here, if Devorah is happy and Devorah is good and Devorah knows how to view her situations in her life, then everything is going to be much, much better. Everything, the whole machine is going to run much more smoothly. Everything, work and wife and, um, and being a mom and wherever, wherever your responsibilities lay, right? And that is the, that's the truth. So, call a vote to all of you that have, have made it out here, some from far, some from close. Good for you that you are making yourself, your own self, this, this temple that you are a priority. Because us women somehow get thrown under the bus because there's so many other people to take care of and there's so many other things to take care of first. And us and our health and our own self-development oftentimes is the last thing on our list. So good for you and welcome to this class. And tonight's class is the Ezrat Hashem going to completely, completely change your life on many levels. And like I said before, you are going to walk out of here knowing and understanding techniques and a formula 
that will work for you once you apply it. Once you apply it, meaning by tomorrow morning, things can be different. Okay? So let's begin. Let's put on our thinking caps. Let's get focused. Let's sit up in our chairs, move our backs a little bit, and, and get really focused. Okay? Our minds, our minds get distracted very, very easily. I was reading a study today that uh, the average human being can focus and concentrate. A person that is not, you know, um, is not um, focused, not learning how to concentrate for 10 seconds at a time. So at every 10 seconds, we get distracted by something, whether it's our neck pain, or right now I have massive fog in my lenses, so that's distracting me, or um, whatever it is that's distracting you, something in the back of the room, maybe Gedalia screaming next door, whatever it may be, right? There's a distraction. So it's really important whenever you feel yourself, whenever you feel yourself fading to do something physical. Okay, to do something physical. Um, it said that, you know, back in the day when, when our sages used to, and the holy, big, holy rabbis, I mean, Chachamim and Gedolim used to sit and learn. They would sit and learn until the wee hours of the morning. And sometimes it was very, very, very hard for them to not fall asleep. So uh, many of them, the great minds, and to, some of us, the small ones, it might sound like, okay, this is a little bit extreme. But when you are on a mission to develop and many, many levels, and many, many layers of yourself, and you understand the layers and the levels of yourself and your life, and you understand that life is so short, right, then, then people will push themselves, right? Just like in the Olympics, people push themselves so they break bones until they, they, their muscles are, are they, get, they get problems in their muscles, and they get all these things because they have goal. These people, these gadolim used to, some of them, they used to put their feet in ice, to stay up, to continue learning, right? Because the co staying concentrated was so, so difficult, right? So um, it's something to be aware of. It's something to be aware of, that we lose concentration very easily. The more we learn how to focus our minds, the better, the longer we can concentrate on things. And, um, and it's okay. So let's concentrate on this class today. Today we're going to be learning, um, in a nutshell, what a muna is, okay? Now, before we start, I just want to say that this class is anonymous in honor of the refua of... The sponsor is anonymous. It's in honor of the refua of Menachem Mendel ben Sarah Batya and Devorah Fega bat, Fega bat Razel. Okay. So we're going to be learning about Emunah, what Emunah is, and how I can use Emunah to change my life. Everything has to be extremely, extremely, extremely doable and practical, okay? I'm going to take you to the store, I'm going to tell you what to buy in order for you to make that cake, in order for you to make that recipe that you want to eventually serve so people can eat. Right? It's not just like we're not learning things that are esoteric and up there and beautiful and concepts that I can't really connect to, but like practically how to bring this down to my life and how to apply it today and tomorrow. Okay? So let's begin. Come inside. You're welcome. We just, we're just starting. You can come inside. You're looking for the Hebrew class? Gedalia is next door. Okay, let's begin. So here I'm going, to lay, I'm going to lay before you a few concepts. These are the concepts. Get these concepts. If you understand these concepts, you understand the whole class. Okay. A human being is, made up of, is comprised of two souls. Okay? Two components. Call them souls, call them components, call them whatever you want. It's, it's a combination of two things. One of them is are called is the Nefesh Abemit, and the other one is called the Nefesh Elokit. This soul is the soul that's responsible for, it's called the Nefesh Sodit, the, the fundamental component, which is responsible for everything that is physical, that is anything that is required of the body, like eating, sleeping, um, sexual relations, um, any kind of comfort, pleasure, that the, the body itself seeks and wants. That is the soul that's responsible for it. It's called the Nefesh Behemit. okay? That's where it comes from. The reason that our, our instinct for survival our knee-jerk reaction to survive and make sure people that have survived the Holocaust, how could they have survived that? Because they had a very, very strong instinct for survival. Everyone there did, right? Even the non-survivors, right? Because it's a very human instinct, right? To survive. So that's all under the category of the Nefesh Abemit. I'm not going to get into this too much. I'm just going to break it down for you simply. And then there's something called the Nefesh Arokit. A Nefesh Arokit is the part of us that's responsible for all the internal world stuff for my need to aspire 
desire to become, to achieve, to, pre- to create, to produce, to connect, to have, a, to have relationships, to become a mother, to give to my children, to, to, to do all the things, to be a giver, to do all the things that I have in my, in my internal world to do and to become. Right? Because if I were to separate a human being and just say, okay, you just live on an Nefesh meat surface level. Okay? Just eat and sleep. Here's a house. Here's a car. Eat, sleep, you know, and, uh, and, and have some pleasures. Watch TV um, and, and do all the bodily things. This person will get severely depressed, if not suicidal. Right? Because you, we can't ignore the fact that we're not just bodies. We can't ignore the fact that we have another component to us. It's called our soul. It's called the nefesh elokit, right? That is extremely in need to do, to create, to produce, to become, to evolve, to connect. Extremely. It's huge. That is, that's its food. That's what it wants. That's what it craves, right? That's why, when are you so proud of yourself? When are you so proud of yourself? You're in bed. At 6 a.m., your alarm goes off. Last night, you really, really wanted to wake up early to go exercise, so you really want to get on that treadmill because you know that that's something that you want to do, right? Because you just want to get healthy and you want to lose weight and you want to feel better, okay? But it's 6 a.m., so what's happening in your mind? What is going on? What's the tug of war? What's the tug of war? <laughs> she knows everything and she just came in. So what's the tug of war? The Nefesh Abemit is saying what? I want to stay in bed. Stay in bed. Stay under your covers, whatever, I'll do it later. And you're, you're, you're going through your mind, like, okay, when am I going to do this? Okay, I'll do it later. I'll just squeeze it between two and three, between when I have to get pick up my kids, or when I have to be between, when I study, I'll study on the treadmill, right? We, 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 that's what happens to the Nefesh HaBemit. The Nefesh HaBemit is pulling us to stay status quo. And the Nefesh HaLokit, the part of us that wants, I want to get on, on this, I want to have this kind of lifestyle, I want to get healthy, I want to feel better, I want to lose weight, I want to have more energy. The part of us that's like, like the night before, that was like, game, I'm doing this. I'm showing up and I'm doing this, right? That's the part of us that's just like, get up, get up, get up. But it's very subtle, very subtle, right? There's a, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a quote that says, uh, I'm just going to say it to you, I'm going to totally kill it, <laughs> destroy it, and not read it to you. I'm just going to say it to you. Uh, basically, a grandchild walks up to his grandfather, his wise grandfather, and he asks his grandfather um, uh, something about life. And his grandfather explains to him, he says, you know, there are two wolves inside each one of us two wolves inside of, of every man. One wolf is a bad wolf. He's greed and selfish and anger and, and, um, and laziness and, co- and complacency. That's one wolf. And the other wolf is goodness and loving and kindness and compassionate and empathetic. And so the, gra- so the grandchild asks his grandfather, so, so what happens? So the grandfather says to him, there's a constant struggle between these two wolves inside every single human being. So the grandchild asks his grandfather, so which wolf wins? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. That's how it works. That's the equation. The equation is, which one are we going to be more of? The one we feed. So you see these like super spiritual people that are like, you know, they don't like to gossip and they're such givers and you're like, okay. Right? Like, that's so not me. Like, if I have to talk, I'm going to talk. Like, that's not me. I'm not like that. I'm, I'm, I, I do what I can. I keep Shabbat or wherever I am in my mitzvah observance, but that's like not me. Right? It's not not me or yes me. It's potential. It's, it's dormant potential. The more I act, the more I feed my spiritual side, my nefesh alokit, the more nefesh alokit I become. And the more I feed my physical side, the more I feed my nefesh alokit, the more fundamental I become, the more behemit I become. That's just the way it works, right? So lying in bed, a person that has been exercising day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, and their alarm goes off at 6 o'clock in the morning, they're not thinking for a second, am I staying in bed, am I not staying in bed, am I cozy, am I not cozy? They're not thinking about that. They're up. Why? Because they've strengthened that, that, that voice inside of them so much that it's not a fight anymore. There's no struggle there anymore. And that's what happens when I first started keeping Shabbat. My first Shabbat, I felt, and I have this in my journal, my journal when I was 12 years old, I found it recently. My first, oh wow, I have like fog in my lenses. One second, give me a second. Eyeballs. Okay. So um, my first Shabbat, I found a journal that I wrote and it said like, Shabbat feels, Shabbat feels like I'm balancing a book on my head for 25 hours and I cannot drop it. That's how it felt. 
like, don't do this, don't do that, don't touch this, don't touch that. Ah, what am I allowed to do? I remember thinking like, okay, so if I wash my hands, I'm for sure allowed to take a shower. It's like the same thing, washing your hands, your body, it's the same thing. And I like took a shower and it was still so hard for me and I broke it. And it was just so, so difficult for me, right? Where today, and wherever level I am in the observance of Shabbat, like I would, I would, I would crumble if I didn't have it, right? It's all a matter of what you get yourself used to. You're a machine, and however you program this machine, that's what you're going to get. Those are the results. Laziness is just another component of the Nefesh Abayamit. It's not me. That's why I, I love it when I hear people saying, that's just like not me, and I don't have it in me. Girlfriend, you have everything in you. What determines your productivity, what determines your outcome in your life is always based on what you feed, right? Always based on what you feed. So let's start this and let's understand this concept, okay? So now we understand the two concepts. The concept is that I'm comprised of two voices. I'm comprised of two components that are very, very, very separate, that are very, very different, okay? That are constantly at war, okay? There's There's a constant battle going on. So where am I in this whole thing? Okay, so let's understand this. Here we go. The world... The world that we live in today worships information. If you can't measure it under a magnifying glass, if you can't see it under a magnifying glass, if you can't measure it with a measuring tape, then it doesn't exist. Then it doesn't exist, right? And I remember having this conversation with a lot of people, that people that I met on the train, people that are in my family that are, that are, that are disconnected from, from Torah, right? And they always said, prove it to me, show it to me. You know what? If God did, if God split the Red Sea today, then I would believe it. But he didn't, so I don't believe it, right? If I would see it with my own two eyes, then it's real. But if he doesn't, then it's not, right? So the world today worships information and what can be, what can be touched, measured, seen, smelled, tasted. And they forget that we are made up of that one part of us, the physical aspect of us. There's a whole other aspect of us. Has, have, anyone, has you, have you ever felt someone looking at you? Have you ever felt someone looking at you and all of a sudden you turn your head and they're looking at you? Have you ever felt that? Like that someone was in the room with you and you picked up your head and all of a sudden there's someone was in the room. Have you felt that? Yes. What is that called? That's called energies. If I would take a person and I would split them down the middle, I would cut them down the middle, right? And I would open them up and I would say, okay, one second. I'm looking for this person's dreams and wants and goals and fears. I'm looking for this person's aspirations. I'm looking for this person's heart. Where would I find that? In what organ would I find that? In their spleen, in their heart, in their stomach, in their liver. Where would I find that? It is such a real part of us. It is so real, all the things that we want. And the world makes billions of dollars off of it. All the billboards, all the commercials, everything that we're being sold is emotion. And emotions are not to be found in the physical body. You can't study them under a microscope. You can't see them if you open up the human body. And yet, the world is obsessed with emotion. People are constantly making mistakes or or buying things because of emotion. Because of how this is going to make me feel. Right? People make huge life changes because of the things that make them feel certain ways. Or who they want to be with in order to feel certain things. Right? So, so what does that mean? It means that we're not just what can be seen and touched and felt and measured. Very much not. We're two worlds in one. And the second part of us, that, is, that, is, that I would say the first part of us, that is our soul, that is our nefesh alokit, has its own type of nutrition. For example, if I know, right, I know that if I would eat junk food from now on, from now till... till I don't know, a month from now, every single day, there have been studies of people that have eaten McDonald's for like 30 days straight, and what has happened to them, and their blood pressure, and their cholesterol, and their weight gain, and their fogginess in their mind, and all the things that happen to them when they eat McDonald's for 30 days straight. Why? Because when a person eats junk food, when a person ingests junk food, what happens to their body? What, what, how does the body respond after a while with disease and breakdown and, 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 and illness, right? Right? That's how a person, that's, that's the natural response of the human body, right? When the person starts to eat well and to juice and to drink chlorophyll, right? And to exercise and to do all the things that are healthy for the body, that are, give life to the body. So, what happens to the body from a frail little dying flower? It wakes up, it comes back to reality, it comes back to life, it comes back to feeling energized, right? Right? So, that it works the same way with our Nefesh Arokit. Our Nefesh Arokit. Our spiritual side, the part of us that is the engine of who we are, because it's the engine of who we are, 
right? I'm not just what I touch, what I eat, what I, what I sleeping, uh, 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 and, and survival instincts. Most of me, most of my experience of life happens in my internal world, the world that can't be touched or measured. So that world has its own nutritional uh, uh, program that if I, if I eat junk food there, I will create disease on a spiritual level. I will create disease on an internal level. I will create disease on an emotional level. So what am I talking about? And here's what I'm talking about. And this, I, God, God willing, will really, from now on, you will be different people from this. Okay, because once I understood this and once I learned this, my life made a, a, a total 360. Total 360. So here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the formula, here's the method, here's the technique. Absorb it, learn it, and, um, and enjoy. Here it is. Our soul, our nefesh arokit, has its own language, has its own nutrition, has its own junk food. What is the junk food of the soul? The junk food of the soul is anything that has a negative energy to it. For example, okay, gossiping, cursing, complaining, anger, sadness, self-pity, depression. All these things that we lend a hand to, that we say, okay, I'm going to feel sad right now. I'm going to feel bad for myself right now. I'm a victim right now. This is happening to me in my life right now. Right? All the things, gossiping, complaining, cursing, God forbid, all of these things, what happens? All of these things have an energy to them. There's energy, there's life to these things. But not the good kind of life. It's the junk food kind of life. So when I overdose on spiritual junk food, and I'm constantly in a place of my life sucks, and I'm constantly in a place of she did this, he did that, did you hear what she did, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is happening to me again, oh my gosh, why is this my situation, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with it, why is my child driving me crazy, I, can just, I can't handle him. When I'm constantly in the place of negativity, what, what that breeds, what that McDonald's breeds for my soul, you ready for this? Is a disconnection from people, a disconnection from self, an emptiness, a hollowness, a sadness, a deep one, like an internal one. Like I don't know how to get out of this, like this, like, uh, like I can't be happy kind of sadness, right? That is the result, that is the high blood pressure and the, uh, and the uh, um, cholesterol. That is the result of negative energies, of the ne negative energies that we, 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 we lend our hand to, that we let our minds go to. So you see, that's why the Torah says, don't speak Lashon Hara if you love yourself. Why? Because when I'm in a place of gossiping and talking about her and putting her down and saying about what he did and what he did and what she did and whatever, and when I'm in a place of complaining, when I'm in a place of negative energies on whatever level, right, what I'm doing to myself is I'm, I'm putting myself in a place of disease. What's disease? Dis-ease. Our body, God forbid, if, if a person's body has a disease, their body is in a place, in a constant place of dis-ease. A lack of ease, a lack of flow, a lack of energy, stuckness. Where does disease come, physical disease? How does disease come? When there's a blockage, when there's a blockage in somewhere in the body, where there's something gets clogged and blocked. Right? Oftentimes that causes diseases. And it's the same way spiritually. When I, am, when I am in a place of negativity, I clog myself spiritually. I clog myself spiritually, and from that, I all of a sudden, I don't understand. I wake up one morning, and I'm just like, I don't love my life. And I'm unhappy. And things are not working for me. And life is happening to me. And I, and I, I just, I can't. And I'm sad. Right? That's the natural response. So what we're learning tonight is this. What we're learning tonight is this. Okay. Okay. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. One second. Okay. Okay. So here we go. The altar from Calm, he says like this. He says like this. He says that a person, a baby, most babies are born healthy. 
What was the baby that are born healthy? Well, how does the baby, how does a person get to a place of illness? Oftentimes, a person, a person sabotages their own health by what they ingest and what they drink, what they eat, what they smoke, what they, whatever they do, right? And what they don't do, the exercise that they don't do, the, 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 the vitamins that they don't take, whatever it is that they're not doing, right? So the health that they once had when they were babies, right, when they were small children, is underneath that whole pile of bad decisions. Right? So what happens when the person starts to, to make better decisions? All the bad decisions come off and then their health resurfaces. Right? Their health, God, for, God willing, right? If, they're, if they haven't killed themselves, if they haven't brought themselves to that place of diabetes or whatever it is, they can get healthy again if they make the right choices. Right? And many people do that all the time, every single day. Make the right choices and get healthy again. If they believe in themselves enough and they believe in the process enough. Right? And it works the same way spiritually. And how does it work the same way spiritually? When I don't allow myself to take, to, to go to that place where it's so naturally to me, it's such a knee jerk reaction for me to respond a certain way, to get angry, to yell, to get frustrated, to feel like life, life is happening to me, to complain, to just scream, to whatever it is. When I don't lend a hand to that, that, that holding back and not being in that place and not allowing myself to keep repeating the bad mistakes, the wrong, the wrong things over and over again, what I'm doing is I'm going to eventually, okay, so now I wanted to say something. The harder it is for you, the higher of a soul you are. Why is it? Because when there's a soul that's high, that the potential for this soul is great. You have, you have potential for greatness. You can do a lot of things with the, the time that you have in this world, right? Or however much time each of us has. No one knows how much time they have, right? But you can do a lot of things with the time that you have in this world. The higher your greatness, the higher your potential, the greater the, the, the weight to get there. Meaning it's not going to be easy for you to climb those rungs because your potential is so high. It's not gonna be easy for you to climb those rungs, right? Why? Because that's just the way the world works. It has to be, it has to be a balance. That's just the balance of the way the thing is. If, if, I'm, if I'm so strong and my body's so strong and I can accomplish and achieve so much, right? And, then, and, and I have no challenge, then I'm not really gonna develop my muscles. If there's no, there's no challenge, if I'm lifting five pounds, I'm just like lifting five pounds, lifting five pounds, lifting five pounds. I'm not going to get anywhere, no matter how strong in potential I am. But if I start putting up, if I start putting up, uh, putting up weights that are hardcore, that are difficult for me to pick up, and I am, I am having a very, 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 very difficult time picking them up, in essence, what I'm doing is I'm creating resistance. There's resistance there, and because of the resistance, that's what creates the muscle. That's what gets me to my goal. The fact that you have such resistance with stopping yourself from going to these places that you're so accustomed to going to means that you have that much potential to get there. The resistance is the thing itself that's going to take you where you want to go to. It's exactly the resistance, the weight, the heaviness that it's going to give you the result that you're looking for. So the harder the situation is, the more you withstand it, the more you get a bird's eye view on it and know how to, 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 to manage it and the way to learn how to manage it is to take these classes and to review them and to, and to write for yourself what normally happens with my kids what normally happens where do I normally fall with my husband where do I normally fall with my own self-esteem and, and, and see where you normally fall where your, where your triggers are and right next to it write how you're going to respond this way and what you expect from yourself this way because it's going to happen again you're going to have a bad time again when they're not going to listen to you. And it's going to happen again when your husband says that thing that that's the thing that you hate that he says or that he does. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again and again and again. And so every time it's going to throw you off your game. And so every time, you, every time you're going to get hurt and lock yourself in the bathroom and cry. So every time you're going to scream at your kids. So every time. So no. So no. Because that's what we have these classes and we have these tools to be able to get wiser and stronger. Right? To be able to manage our life well. So you sit down and you make for yourself a list of where you fall, where your traps are, and how you're going to deal with the next time. And next time, even if you got that much better, even if you got that much better, you've just gotten much closer to your goal. So this is the way it is. The way it is is like this. When I stop taking, when I stop going to those places, what ends up happening to me is that I all of a sudden reveal the health that's always been there all along. The me. All of a sudden I discover me. I discover the, the me that's forgotten, the happy me, the calm me, the relaxed me, the easygoing me, the non-fearful me. Because that's the health. That's the, you were born like that. 
You weren't born full of anxiety and stress and fear and what's going to happen and what's going to be, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You, you weren't born that way. Life and your responses to life and the way you view the people in your life and your, 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 maybe your parents or maybe your, whatever you've seen as a child has taught you, has wired you, has programmed you to respond to life situations this way. But there's not really one response. You can choose the response that you want to have to your life. You could choose who the person that you want to be in your life. You could choose that person. How do you choose it? At first, it's really hard. Just like it's really, really hard to get out of bed at 6 o'clock in the morning to start working out. Just like it's really, really hard to give up a bad habit. Just like it's really, really hard to start eating healthy. Just like it's really, really hard to, you know, disconnect from poisonous people in your life. Just like it's really, really hard. But you do it because you want to go somewhere else. Because you want to explore other things. Because you want to see another place in your life. Because you want to you wanna experience your life. So you, so you do it, even if it's hard. Right? We don't realize that we're powerhouses. We're, you're a powerhouse. You're a powerhouse. No matter how old you are, you're a powerhouse. And if you make up your mind to do something and you stick to it, the first week it's going to be hard, the second week it's going to be a little easier, but it's still going to be hard, and you keep doing it, you will see different results. You will become a different person. You will manifest different emotions in your life. People, the people that you will attract will be the people that you want to attract. Not the people that you're always having friction with because you keep falling back into the same trap over and over again with yourself. So the ultimate Mikhail says, he says, he says, it's health. It's health. It's that a baby is born healthy, and if it grows up, and it sabotages its health, and when it makes better decisions, it comes back to its health, and it's the same way here. That we make bad decisions, and we, we grow up, and we understand things to be different ways, and we, we, when we get to a certain place in our life where we, we want different things. I don't want to be this person. I don't want to be unhappy. I don't want to be stuck. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to feel bad for myself anymore. I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to feel like life, life is happening to me. I want to be in a good space. I want to feel like, like life is awesome. Even if I'm, I don't have money. Or life is awesome, awesome. Even if I'm not married. Or life is awesome. Even if whatever is. Life is good. But life is good only if you accept in your mind that you give definition to your life. And your life doesn't give definition to you. And you understand your power, and you understand your strength, and you understand that the power of your choices are tremendous. And they will take you to where you want to go. So what I want to say right now about Amuna, what is Amuna? And listen to this, because this is going to be the cherry on top of everything. What is Amuna? Amuna is... Amuna is a force inside of this Nefesh Anukit, Inside of this internal world of ours, it's a force, it's a power that gets activated by what I believe in. So if I believe that I have no mazel in my life, I just have no luck. If I believe that, this, that I'm, I don't know, I don't have, I don't have a high self-esteem, I'm embarrassed, I, 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 I don't know, I don't have what it takes, I'm... I, if I believe all those things about myself, then you know what happens? Emuna is very, very simple. Emuna is the force in our nefesh that gets activated by what we believe in. So according to our belief system, that is what... So look at your life right now. Just look at your life right now. Look at your life. Look at all the things in your life. All the things that you're unhappy about. You have to know that all the things that you're unhappy about in your life are somewhere deep inside your subconscious, things that you believe about yourself. Things that are coming to you or not coming to you. We activate, okay? This is from the Zohar. We activate what we believe in. So if I believe that I... So, you know, it's so funny. It's so funny because I have a, I have a cousin who just, like, is always, like... Um, saying what she is. I'm this, I'm not that. I know myself. I'm this, I'm not that. I'm not this, I'm yes, that. I'm that. And a lot of those things are like holding her back in life. But that's what I am. That's just what I am. So if I ask her right now, can I ask you a question? You believe that you're X, Y, Z. 
Can you believe, instead of the fact that you're X and Y and Z, instead of that, can you believe right now that you are all the things that you wish you would be? So if you don't have a great self-esteem, let's just take that for an example right now, right? If I don't believe that I have a great self-esteem, can I just for a second entertain the fact that I'm the bomb, that I'm the bomb, that I'm amazing, that I do have great self-esteem, that I have what to give to this world, that I am important, that my, that my mission here is not over by the fact that I'm still alive and breathing. Can I entertain that instead of entertaining what, I'm, what I am? I've accepted that these things are what I am, so therefore I'm manifesting these things. You've accepted the fact that you're not good at relationships and that's why you're single, so therefore you're single. If you, would start, if you would start entertaining and thinking and almost obsessing over what you want to be, over what you really are, why is it so easy for us to accept our, 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 our faults, the faults that we say that we have, and it's so hard for us to accept maybe a, a vision of where we want to be and what we have maybe in the, in, the, in the recesses of our potential. Why is it so easy for us to accept the fact that we're not good enough at this and we're not, not enough of that and we're not good enough of a mother and we don't do enough of this and enough of that and I don't care enough about this and that and I should do more of this and I should do more of that? Why is it so easy for us to be in that space and so hard for us to be in a space of I can contribute. I have what it takes. I am a force. I can get out of bed at 6 o'clock in the morning and work out. I can dump my coffee and have a green juice. I have what it takes to be patient. I have what it takes not to gossip. I have what it takes not to complain. Why can't I think about myself in that light? Why do I have to think about myself in that light? Why is it so easy for me to accept that and not that? that those are the results that we're going to get. And Muna gets activated by anything you believe in. So believe you're small and you'll be small. So believe you're worthless so you'll be worthless. Because it gets activated. You see, it's not a smart force. It's whatever you apply to, that's what it activates. So if you don't want to be broke, don't think, keep thinking that you're broke. And if you don't want to be sad, stop telling yourself, I just don't know how to stop being sad. I'm just a sad person. It's in my genes. That's a great one. It's in my genes. We could beat our genes. We could beat our genes physically, we could beat our genes spiritually, we could beat our genes mentally, we could beat it. We have what it takes. If we just accept it, you know, my mom had diabetes, my father had diabetes, I'm just going to get diabetes, so I'll just eat this cheesecake right now, you know, because it's in my genes. That's not, what, that's not what Torah says, that's not what God wants, that's not what we preach, that's not what Judaism is about. Judaism is all about knowing and getting in touch with the fact that you're a force, and that you have so much inside of you that you have not even tapped. You have not even tapped. You have accepted. You have accepted yourself this way. You have accepted your life to be this way. You have accepted that this is what it is. And this is what I am. Okay, new, new. Another day. Why? Why? It's all about quality. It's not about quantity. It's not about living 120 miserable years. It's about living my day today living my day today without giving a hand to all the negative energies that bring me to that small place inside of me that continuously manifest the negativity that I see in my life over and over again. So you want to change your life? You're unhappy in your marriage? You're unhappy with your kids? You're unhappy with your weight, with your health? You're unhappy in your profession? You're unhappy with all these things? First of all, stop being unhappy. Stop thinking that anything is happening to you because you have the power to make a change, so many changes in your life. You can, you're the only one that can pull yourself out of that pit. So that's number one. Understand that the more you say to yourself, I'm unhappy, I'm unhappy with my situation, you're, you're, you're propelling that further. You're creating more of that. So how do I get out of these situations? How do I get out of these places? Number one, stopping immediately immediately to respond to these things in the same way you've been responding all along. Self-pity, complaining, anger, frustration, sadness, all those things are spiritual junk food that create 
that creates toxicity in your soul, that creates toxicity in your energy. Have you ever gone off of sugar for a week, for two weeks? Do you feel the difference? Do you see the difference in your skin? Do you feel the difference in your energy? It's insane. What are the first three days like? Four days like? Five days like? You're shaking. You're angry. You can't think straight. You're foggy. You're, you're, you don't know what's going on. You're angry. All these things. Why? Because you're detoxing. Detoxing. So when I have to understand that, it's, it's my spiritual detox is to stay away from negative energies. So for the next week, I challenge you till our next class. I challenge you. For this next week, do not lend a hand. Do not lend a hand to all those things that are going to continuously keep you stuck in the places that you don't want to be stuck in anymore. And this is the formula. So don't come and tell me, you know, but it's not true because he did this and she did that. I don't care about anything that anyone else did to you. Plenty of people have done things to me. Plenty of people have done things to very, 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 very successful people that have busted out of their comfort zones. You want to bust out of your situation? You want to get unstuck in your life? You have to know the only way to get unstuck in your life is to stop the cycle. And the way to stop the cycle is to detox. And the way to detox is to do not lend a hand to all the negative energies that are holding you back. And what are those negative energies? All things that we were talking about before. All the anger, all the frustration, all the life is happening to me, all the gossiping, all the complaining, all the low self-esteem, all that stuff. Stay away from me for a week. Detox. It'll be very hard for you. But extremely rewarding and liberating. And once you do that, you're actually giving yourself a chance. You're actually giving yourself a chance to come back to yourself, to re-experience your own self, to rediscover who you really are, to get in touch with your own happiness, to get in touch with your own strengths, to, get in t- to, get, to become clear-minded. And this is not just like some esoteric thing. This is, this is what saved my life and so many people's lives. This is the formula. You either continue complaining or you kick yourself in the rear and you say, this is what I'm doing. It's one of two choices. That's what life boils down to. You continue complaining or you decide to take on a different route. And Amuna is whatever you believe in. Whatever you believe about yourself, about your kid, about your husband, about your health, whatever you believe, you're going to manifest. That is the brilliance of Imuna. If I tell you how many sources in the Torah bring this down, how many Zohars, how many Peleotas, how much Chafetz Chaim, how many, how many, how much, how vast the conversation of Koch HaMachshava is and Imuna is. Whatever you think about, you create. Whatever you think about, you create. Maybe it's not immediately. But I want to tell you something interesting that happened to me. Ever since I started learning this, I've taught this many, many times to many hundreds of women since. But ever since I've started learning this, I stopped immediately, cold turkey, with all of the, the, the stuff, all of the, uh, I'm a victim, and my life is, my life. I stopped. I fell a few times, for sure, along the way, for sure, and immediately I saw it. I saw it, I saw it in my face. I saw, the, I saw how, how life was getting the way it was again, the way things were again, the stress and the anxiety from that. Because you have to understand it's a chain reaction. When you're, in, when you're in negative, you produce negative, you feel negative, everyone's negative, you attract negative people. Oh my gosh, it's a huge one. Attract negative people. You attract what you, you mirror what you attract. You attract what you mirror. Right? Chazal say that. Whatever you see in her, you gotta know. It's in you. That's why you see it. You got, that's why you see it. If you've never, ever, ever, You've, ne- you've never seen the, the, the Gucci sign. The Gucci, what's it called, that sign? What's it called? What? What? Logo. You've never seen it, ever, ever, ever. You, I don't know, you never saw it. You never noticed it. You didn't know what Gucci was. You grew up in the ghetto. You don't know what Gucci is, okay? And all of a sudden, you got, you got married, and you married this rich guy, and he was like, I got to see some Gucci. And you're like, Gu what? And you're like, Gucci. And you're like, okay. And then all of a sudden, once you get that bag, shoe, scarf, all of a sudden you start seeing it everywhere. You're like, oh my gosh, Gucci. Oh my gosh, Gucci. Oh my gosh, Gucci. Where was I? Right? You start noticing it everywhere. You start noticing her glasses are Gucci, and this guy's hat is Gucci, and that store is Gucci, and you've never seen it before in your life. Why? Because now you're aware of it. You only see what you're aware of. That's what Chazal say. That you can only see the, the thing that you see in that person that you hate so much, 
You only see it because you know it. Because it's here. A person that's a giver and that's whatever, they don't notice stingy people. Eh, it's okay, I'll buy it for you. You ever been with, with, uh, with, uh, with a person that... Have, I've seen this many times. People, I've, seen a, I've seen a person that is a super giver, super duper 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 chesed, 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 does everything for everyone all day with a person that like, doesn't like to spend like a nickel. Yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to eat. You eat. You eat. Right? So, so uh, you ever seen them together? The, 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 the person that is this major giver and Baal Chesed, it's like, no way. You're eating. Sit down. I'm going to buy it for you. It's not a, she, doesn't even, she, she doesn't even notice that there's like a, a, a problem with like stinginess a little bit there. She doesn't even pick up on it. But if you have a little stinginess in your heart, and you're sitting with a person that, like, you notice time and time again, they're constantly cutting, counting their pennies. And you're like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Stingy. Yeah. Right? And every time I go out with her, she leaves before the bill comes. Okay. Right? Never taking her out again. You notice what you're aware of. Okay? So the thing is like this, and with this we're going to end. With this we're going to end, because I don't want to over, overload, because we've said a lot tonight. Okay? Our words, our thoughts, our actions create our reality. Our thoughts are number one. Control your thoughts. Take them to where you want to take them. Bring them to a place that you want to actually, it's almost like it's like, it's like the ground. And you want to plant. The thoughts you're thinking are your seeds. So what do you want to see sprout? What do you want to see sprout? You want to see sprout power and happiness and success and love and good friendships. You want to see that sprout in your life, right? That's what you want to see. So I promise you. And the Torah is screaming it from every, every Pasuk that talks about Pekor HaMach Shavar and Emunah. It's screaming it from the sea. It's, coming, it's busting out of the seams. And the, the bottom line point is, if you want to see it, entertain it. Think it. Plant it. Put it there. It will grow. That's what's going to grow. It's your garden. You decide what grows. Think big. You'll create bigness. We don't want to think small anymore. We're done. And tap into your own power. You have to know you have a tremendous power. Huge force. Huge. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good night. That's going to be your Yes. <laughs>